close your eyes and spread thoughts of goodwill. Thoughts of goodwill are good for you, they're good for the people around you. They're good for you because if you can act on goodwill in every case, in every interaction with other people, you're much more likely to do skillful things. If you act on ill will, one, you'll probably do something unskillful, and two, you probably wouldn't want to admit that you did something wrong. If that's the attitude, then you really don't learn. And your goodness then will depend on other people's goodness. You're good only to people who are good to you. Then your goodness is really unreliable. So we develop goodwill for ourselves and for the people around us. Because it's good for everybody. Of the various forms of merit, the Buddha said, this is the highest. The merit of generosity is, is great, but it's still only a fraction of the merit of virtue. And the merit of virtue is still only a fraction of the merit of goodwill. Because the whole point of the teaching is to focus in on the mind. We're generous so that we can think kind thoughts about ourselves and others. We're virtuous, so it allows us to think kind thoughts about ourselves and others. But the kind thoughts themselves, those are the real motive for all your actions. That's the way you want it to be. Because when that's the motive, then you're much more likely to enjoy the results of good actions. The important thing is that you not get careless and not get heedless. That's why the meditation doesn't end with goodwill. It begins with goodwill, but then it moves on to developing a good, solid state of concentration in the mind. You stay with the breath coming in, the breath going out, and you make it comfortable. So it's a good place to stay. And as the mind settles in with the breath, then it can see itself more clearly and can understand itself. And this is where you really do the real work of, of the meditation. When you understand yourself and see that unskillful habits are still there in the mind, and you figure out ways of cutting them back and then uprooting them. And as for skillful habits, you develop them until they bear fruit. The fruit of a happiness is really reliable. So we start with simple things like generosity, virtue, and goodwill. We move into the mind, get some control over our mind. So we can think the thoughts we want to think and don't have to think the thoughts we don't want to think. And particularly, we learn how to think thoughts that will lead us to a true happiness. A happiness that's based on something that doesn't change, but which can be found inside. We each of us have something really of value inside us, and yet we act as if there was nothing there. We fritter away our days with little things, and the big issues of life don't get addressed. So turn around and look at your mind, because the mind is the source of all suffering, but it's also the so source of all potential for true happiness. It's all in what you cultivate. So you've got this powerful mind. Make sure you use the power well. 